Welcome to Cell Clips. In this video, we will be focusing on the transport of proteins to and from the nucleus. If you've seen our other Cell Clips videos, you know that proteins translated in the cytoplasm can be transported to a number of organelles, including the nucleus, the ER, or the mitochondria. Nuclear transport is an important topic if you think about what goes on in the nucleus. All proteins involved in DNA replication and gene transcription need to be imported into the nucleus. Export out of the nucleus is just as critical because mRNA transcribed in the nucleoplasm, as well as ribosomal subunits made in the nucleolus, need to be taken to the cytoplasm where they are assembled for protein synthesis. So how is nuclear transport controlled to maintain the specialized environment of the nucleus? To answer this question, let's look at the structures of the nucleus that make this transport possible. The nucleus is protected by the nuclear envelope, which is made of two lipid bilayers, an outer membrane and an inner membrane. These membranes are separated by the perinuclear space. This envelope provides a barrier that is impermeable to large molecules. In some places, the outer and inner membrane fuse together, creating pores that allow small molecules to diffuse bidirectionally across the membranes. Larger molecules are prevented from entering the nucleus by nuclear pore proteins called nuclear porins, or NUPs for short. Scaffold NUPs form a layer around the pore and get held in place by membrane ring proteins. On the nucleoplasmic side, the scaffold NUPs contain a nuclear basket which helps export mRNA to the cytoplasm. On the cytosolic side, the scaffold NUPs have fibrils that extend out into the cytoplasm. These fibrils capture proteins destined for the nucleus as they pass by the pore. Scaffold NUPs are coated with channel NUPs, which create a mesh of filaments across the pore. This mesh is like a sieve, allowing only small molecules to pass through. Proteins destined for the nucleus are marked with a nuclear localization signal, a zip code sequence located anywhere on the peptide that is rich in positively charged amino acids like arginine and lysine. Importins bind this sequence, carry the peptides to the nuclear pore, and interact with channel NUPs to melt the sieve allowing these larger molecules to travel through the pore. But getting the important into the nucleus is only half the battle. The transporter still needs to release its cargo and return to the cytoplasm to continue transporting proteins. This process relies on a small GTPase called RAN. Check out our video on GTPases if you want more background on these types of enzymes. Nuclear transport relies on a high concentration of RAN GTP in the nucleus and a high concentration of RAN GDP in the cytoplasm. RAN is small enough to freely diffuse in and out of the nucleus, but a concentration gradient is maintained because RAN GEF, or RAN GEF, a protein that causes RAN to release GDP in exchange for GTP, is localized in the nucleus. So any RAN GDP that floats into the nucleus immediately exchanges GDP for GTP. RAN GAP, the protein that promotes GTP hydrolysis, is found primarily in the cytoplasm. So as soon as RAN-GTP diffuses into the cytoplasm, it is converted to RAN-GDP. Since particles diffuse from areas of high concentration to low, anything bound to RAN-GTP will diffuse out of the nucleus. When an important enters the nucleus, it is bound by RAN-GTP, causing the important to release its cargo into the nucleoplasm. The RAN-GTP bound important then diffuses out of the nucleus, moving from a high to low concentration of RAN-GTP. In the cytoplasm, RAN-GAP triggers the hydrolysis of RAN-GTP, causing RAN to release the importin. Protein export from the nucleus is very similar to import. Proteins that need to be moved out of the nucleus contain a nuclear export signal that is bound by an exportin. Exportins found in the nucleus first bind RAN-GTP which causes a conformational change to allow the exportin to bind its cargo. The whole complex then diffuses into the cytoplasm, where a gap activates RAN-GTP hydrolysis, causing the exportin to release its cargo. Thus, we can see the process for import and export are similar, but with a few key differences. Importins bind and release their ligands one at a time, first binding their cargo in the cytoplasm, then releasing it when bound by RAN-GTP in the nucleus. After diffusing to the cytoplasm, RAN-GTP hydrolysis causes importins to release RAN. Exportins, on the other hand, bind and release multiple ligands at once. First, they bind RAN-GTP, 
Then they bind their cargo and transport it to the cytoplasm. GTP hydrolysis in the cytoplasm causes exportants to release both their cargo and RAN simultaneously. So you can remember that importants bind one at a time and exportants bind all or none. As you can see, nuclear transport is tightly controlled and for good reason. These processes regulate the movement of proteins to the nucleus and these proteins regulate gene expression, DNA repair, replication, and many other processes essential for cell life. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching Cell Clips.